Okay, so in this video, we're going to be doing a guide on Project Ascension, a quick guide at that. If you guys want to know any more advanced information about the game, check out the wiki link in the description below. It'll give you all the information that you need about the server. But for the rest of this video, enjoy a quick guide to Project Ascension. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's jump right in. Okay guys, so first of all, what is Project Ascension? I'm on the wiki for Project Ascension now, and it says that Project Ascension is a classless World of Warcraft mod with over a million players where you can pick any of the existing spells and talents from all the way up to Wrath of the Lich King. At the moment though, it's progressed to Burning Crusade. So Wrath is going to come out after Burning Crusade and you will unlock things like the Death Knight abilities. And they advertise it as World of Warcraft being done your way. It's a classless World of Warcraft realm where you can again pick whatever you want, any talent, any ability. And in the case of the most popular game mode, uh, which is the seasonal game mode, where every single season is a set short amount of time where you compete with all the other players to uh, get the best gear you can, the most efficient character that you can create, and with a unique rule set for that season, see who's the best, right? Who can get the best character? And that's what people do, and every season it changes, and there's a new game mode, new stuff to do. This season is season six, uh, where you can play on the main realm up to level 70 through Burning Crusade content where you can choose any ability and any talent that you want in the game to make your own custom class. There is also the Seasonal Realm which the most popular version of that being playing as a regular character but having all of your abilities be randomized. So the rundown is that every two levels you get an ability, a random one, right? Starting at level 10. So you do that all the way to level 70 with only a few exceptions for when you get certain abilities and it's all explained to you in game with these little chests you'll get starting at level 54 and they tell you everything you have to know about that. But the point of it is that you're trying to make the best build that you can with what the game happens to give you and there are certain ways you can play around this like unlocking sealed cards. Sealed cards are things you get in game that literally will allow you to put one ability on one of your new characters that you choose. Now sealed cards are also random when you're receiving them so getting the exact ability that you want is not necessarily easy but if you do get lucky and yes it is RNG uh, then you will be rewarded with a far stronger character because let's say you could for example start with shadow form guaranteed at level 40 or moon can form guaranteed at level 40. Perhaps you're guaranteed arcane blast and you want to make an arcane character so at 64 you get arcane blast guaranteed with the arcane blast sealed card that's what you would do right and obviously that would give you a major advantage over somebody who had to leave it all up to chance there are also a variety of other game modes that you can play besides the normal mode these include iron man mode where you play by yourself against npcs you can't trade with anybody you can only pvp with other iron men uh, and if you die, you lose. There's also the brand new game mode of Nightmare Mode, where at level 70, you can choose not to be in Nightmare Mode anymore. So it's just a leveling experience thing, and you will take a butt ton of extra damage from both physical and magic attacks. But when you reach max level, you get a bunch of new items and just gear in game, and that's supposed to make it worth it. Uh, and there's Resolute Mode, where you just level at slower rates uh, and I believe that's it for this season but most people play the normal game mode and within that you have what we call no risk and high risk. No risk and high risk is basically a differentiation in PvP rule sets, right? So in high risk mode, the big difference is that if you kill somebody or they kill you, uh, you will drop items when you die. Some of the items that either you have on or that you have in your inventory. You can, however, use fell commutation in game to protect certain pieces of gear. You can protect all of your gear, uh, but you have to have the gold in your inventory to protect that item. So for example, it might say the most that you risk is let's say over 100 gold. And if you don't have over 100 gold, then when it does decide to pull off one of your items to give to the opponent who killed you, you will just drop that item. But if you do have enough gold to pay for it, it will just subtract the gold, give it to the player that killed you, and then you will keep your item. So it's a pretty cool system for people who like to PvP because it gives them a reward. Uh, you can potentially get your opponents really good stuff or they just drop a butt ton of gold, right? Now in no risk mode, 
that's just playing normal World of Warcraft on a PvE rule set. You don't lose any items, and you have to, I believe, trigger PvP on to actually be able to PvP, and by default, everybody is on your side, except for being on a different faction, right? So it's just normal WoW versus RuneScape meets World of Warcraft uh, in high-risk mode. Now, Ascension is also a multi-faction MMO, which means you cannot guild up, you can't join the same guild as people on other factions, but you can group with them, and you can play with them as if you were their allies. But you, as an orc, could group up with a human, literally, in a group in-game, and kill humans together if you wanted. It doesn't matter. In order to attack somebody on your own faction, you would use what we call criminal intent. This is an ability in-game that makes you a criminal, and guards will attack you in your own city. Now, if you become become a criminal enough, you'll become what we call a outlaw. So if you become a criminal, of course, you can't be in cities because guards are attacking you unless you can evade them somehow. Uh, and of course, everybody will have the option to attack you and you will have the option to attack everybody else. Now, in order to train abilities in Project Ascension, you have to find class trainers all over the place, right? Because you can roll any ability. So some ways that players have decided to combat this, specifically because the devs put it in the shop, right, is uh, the addition of what we call books of Ascension, and players often buy Books of Ascension either with in-game gold from farming or by buying donation points and buying the book, uh, and they buy this book and it lets you train every ability. So it's very, very good, and so you'll see books a lot. You can use anybody's book though, so if you see somebody's book, click the book and learn all your abilities because it'll really save you some time. So Project Ascension goes all the way up to Burning Crusade, like I said, but they did change all the dungeons and the raids to be uh, more difficult to be on par with a classless game. The point of Ascension is what we call, and I made a video on, link in the description, meta progression. Meta progression in a game is when the whole point of the game is to make more characters so that you can eventually make that one character that becomes incredibly strong. I mean, that's the most basic way of putting it. So in order to do that, what you have to do is play one character to unlock new things to put on a brand new character. And perhaps that keeps going, and perhaps you have to keep making new characters until you get exactly what you need. Whether that's the perfect set of abilities, or the perfect seal card, or whatever it might be, there's probably always something that you can do to make your character better. This is further enforced by the fact that once you get to max level, actually level 68, you can start trading in an in-game currency known as Marks of Ascension, which are acquired from doing Outland quests and from higher level quests in general, including Callboard quests. You can spend this currency on what we call Scrolls of Fortune. Scrolls of Fortune allow you to re-roll an ability that you rolled in-game into a brand new one. This is a permanent effect. Scrolls of Fortune are actually obtained every 10 levels, so at level 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70, but you can also buy them with Marks of Fortune. Of course, the price will rise. I, I believe it starts off at 200, and then it goes 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and at one point, I was at 1,600 marks per scroll, which is quite a lot, right? Uh, so what you'll do is you buy all those Scrolls of Fortune, and you re-roll all of your bad abilities, and abilities that don't go towards whatever build you're trying to build towards, and you try to perfect your character. So this whole idea of meta progression is ingrained in Project Ascension, and it's one of the main things that makes it different from base WoW. Okay, so another thing to keep in mind for Project Ascension is their random enchant system. This is a very unique system to Project Ascension, where you essentially get extra talents on your gear. All your gear that you find will most likely have either a common, rare, epic, or legendary quality, um, mystic enchant, and of course, they vary in power level, typically depending on the rarity. Now, again, I said you can find them on random pieces of gear, on dungeon gear, stuff like that. How do you get them yourself? Well, you'll get a enchanting altar when you reach max level. You see they're typically in the cities as well, so you'll just visit Orgrimmar or Stormwind and use somebody else's mystic altar. You can also find them out in the world. An example of where one is is actually going to be in the Alteric Mountains in Dalaran, but I think there are a few other locations. However, those are not really used as much. People just go for the traditional altar in the city. So what you can do with them is you can see up here we have three currencies, Mystic Orbs, Mystic Runes, and Mystic Extracts. Mystic Orbs and Runes are obtained from doing quests, dungeons, and PvP, and Mystic Extracts are acquired in a completely different way. First and foremost, Mystic Orbs and Mystic Runes. Mystic Orbs are actually going to be used to put enchants on gear. So for example, I have this crossbow. If I wanted this aspiration, random enchant, I would use collection 
Resurrection Reforge to pay Mystic Orbs to put it on the bow. Now, Mystic Runes can be used to reforge an item, giving it a completely random enchant. You might get something really good, you might get something worth selling, uh, but what it also does is, as you can see me use it, you see I gained a level, and that's my Mystic Altar level. Every level I get another Mystic Extract, and then if I get something really good on a piece of gear, I can click to extract, except if I wanted to get rid of it, it does destroy the item in the process, and then I would have a brand new enchant in my enchant collection. Now this is a really good way to mix it up and do brand new things that you never thought you would see in World of Warcraft. This is a very good example in the fact that we're playing in the Burning Crusade expansion, but you can actually get the Raise Dead legendary enchant that teaches you how to raise dead, literally like a Death Knight does, and it is a permanent effect. It's pretty cool, and there's a variety of different things like that that can really customize your playstyle and make you play in ways you never thought possible. So I think it's a pretty good system. It's been improved upon a lot since it was in the past, and and I would definitely give the random chance system in its current iteration uh, like an A. Now once you've done all that you make your new character and we'll go over the wild card realm in that regard. Uh, most people play it, it's the seasonal realm. You make a randomized character and at that point you just need to find abilities that somewhat work together in a way that's good for you. If you're brand new I highly recommend you just kind of get in there and play what you start with and then as you make it to max level get those sealed cards, that's when you should start thinking about sending a sealed card with a specific purpose in mind to a new character, maybe taking 30 minutes or to an hour to roll, roll, roll until you get a decent build that you want, right? Something with at least two abilities that go towards what you want, like maybe you want Lightning Bolt and Earth Shock to go Elemental Shaman-y, Nature-y, right? Maybe you want Arcane Missiles Moonfire, right, to go Arcane, and that would be enough. So that's what you kind of want to go for, but it's highly recommended again by me that you just make a brand new character with brand random abilities. You accept the fact that some people are ahead of you in their meta progression uh, and that you need to catch up by perfecting your character which can only be done by reaching max, farming sealed cards, or by farming scrolls of fortune by spending your marks of ascension that you earn and grind for in game to get brand new abilities on a character you do like that's already max level. And then with this whole idea of meta progression in the game, it's also just regular WoW up to Burning Crusade. So I think that's a pretty accurate quick guide honestly of project ascension and i don't even know if it's gonna end up being that quick now that i'm looking at the time uh so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i wanted to put out a guide just to help people because i've seen a lot of people in comments say hey mcdoubles i totally want to play this but it's just so intimidating and i just don't know how to get into it but like i said i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did make sure to give it a like and a subscribe but i will see you guys in the next video big doubles out